So today brings with it the first update of the Modern Warfare 3 post-launch season. Update 1.33 dropped today and around 6.5 gigabytes. What changed? What's new and what's added? Today we're breaking down all that, so as we go along, drop your thoughts down below. What do you think of this update? Good changes? Not too pleased? Whatever the case, drop your thoughts down below. But if you enjoyed the video, you'll find it out on Insightful. Do me a favor and drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single thing running all things Modern Warfare 3. We got a lot up on deck here that you still won't want to miss, and I'd love to have you in the community. Final notes, make sure you check out my friends over at G Fuel code espresso gets you 30% off your entire order and check out the link down in the description below if you guys want to join us while we stream here during this cod grind season i'd love to see you in the chat anyways let's get into what update 1.33 changed for modern warfare 3. so first and foremost the patch notes did issue a disclaimer here saying due to unforeseen issues not all of the changes scheduled for today's update were able to be released our teams are hard at work to get key movement changes multiplayer weapon balancing zombies gameplay and stability fixes and more into the next available update so Kind of sounds like we'll have another title update here coming at some point in the nearest future to fix more of these issues persisting and another round of balancing passes. But for the time being, some key issues have been fixed, others maybe not so much. But let's firstly start on what content is on deck. Introduced with this new title update and with the sort of new playlist update going ahead for the week here, we do see a new set of weekly challenges here, where in multiplayer, it's asked with hitting 10 operator assists with recommended weapons, 25 kills while moving with recommended weapons, 20 operator kills while aimed down sights with a DG58 LSW, 20 operator kills while aiming down sights with the recommended assault rifle, 20 hip fire kills with a DG58, 20 hip fire kills with a recommended assault rifle, and three operator collateral kills with a recommended weapon. Weapon. Then in zombies, you have to complete five contracts, get 25 hellhound kills with a recommended weapon, 100 hip fire and 100 critical kills with a recommended assault rifle, 125 kills with a recommended battle rifle while having at least four perks active, killing three big bounty HVTs with a recommended battle rifle, and getting 10 consecutive kills without taking damage 10 times with a recommended weapon. Completing any five of those will net you the Jack Nightshade rifle kit for the DG58, a brand new aftermarket part here with this, and it seems like that's kind of going to be a theme going forward here, a new aftermarket part every single week, which they are still going to be available here as the weeks progress and after the season ends or I guess season one picks up those will still be available via in-game challenges but just not a part of those weekly challenges but more importantly if you're like me you want to complete these new weekly challenges not necessarily for the aftermarket part but instead for the golden river camo that's the reward for completing four weeks of the preseason weekly challenge sets that of course not quite being available just yet and available in two weeks time but to get ahead and so you're not doing four weeks worth of challenges in the final week I'd say it's important to go for. Now, additionally, one thing that was supposed to be live here as of today, and as of recording this, it's not very well likely could be as of the time this video goes live, maybe it's just a little bit behind schedule, but the True Legends event was scheduled for today in partnership with the Call of Duty Endowment lasting from today until this time next week. So the event should come with 10 tiers of items, the emblematic sticker, a 30 minute double XP token, the always forward large decal, 45 minutes of a double weapon XP token, the got your back weapon charm, the stacked large decal, the anthem emblem, the flanked calling card, the 60 minute double battle pass XP token, and the brave stripes weapon camo, a universal weapon camo at that. So something you put on every single weapon, Modern Warfare 2, Modern Warfare 3 weapons, doesn't matter. But it said also that you can equip the Warriors Pack Koa King Operator skin during the event to progress through the Call of Duty Endowment themed rewards more quickly. So if you end up getting the Call of Duty Endowment bundle, you can end up using that Operator to end up getting more XP towards this event whenever it actually does go live. Now, I said it before, I don't care too much for microtransactions, but I always do find the code packs at least worth the pickup, since 100% of those proceeds do go to the Call of Duty Endowment, a nonprofit helping veterans find jobs after deployment. So honestly, I think it's a good and worthy cause to pick up in my opinion. But anyways, that is the content that is added and should be added as of this update here that once you jump on, hopefully you see all that. Again, as of recording this, the endowment event is not live, which is strange. It popped up in game two days ago, but isn't there as of recording this. But anyways, let's talk about some gameplay changes. The big and key stuff here at this come down to a few bug fixes. Firstly, the minimap elevation is now indicated properly after this update, meaning that when you see a UAV sweep or a red dot, it should give you the notifier of above or below with a little carrot icon on that red dot on the minimap. That was something that honestly was a big deterrent in terms of knowing where enemies were with this first week of gameplay. Was it the end of the world? No, but it absolutely is something that should work as intended, which this did not, so it's nice to see that fixed out. 
We also see that there is a slight fix to the tax sprint delay after sliding that now should be removed here. That now being back in line with the weekend two version of slide canceling and the slide animation during the beta. So nice to see that though. It does seem like there's still not as much recharge time while chaining together slides like that. So that's something that may just be intentional at this point. We'll see. They did mention that there are still going to be more movement changes coming in the future. So we'll see if that is still, again, one of those fixes they meant to get out today or if it is intentional. Anyways, beyond that, the TDM score now goes to 100. Previously, it was 75. So for those that play TDM exclusively, you'll have a few more kills to net before the game concludes. Weapon changes. We saw a new requirement for the priceless camo on the WSP Swarm. That now requires 10 operator double kills while in tax stance, whereas previously it was 10 akimbo double kills so i'm cool with that change i think it does make it slightly easier to accomplish at that point while you're still going to have to find double kills you're going to be able to be a bit more accurate with that tax stance tightened spread rather than just the akimbo massive spread of dual hip firing that wsp swarm also i will say i think that the double kills are pretty easy right now it seems like they're very generous in the timing it might genuinely be if your name is still in the feed that it counts as a double kill which if you're not aware the feed moves pretty slow unless everyone's just getting massive amounts of kills and it's just speeding through it but that does stay on the kill feed for quite some time we also saw that challenge tracking for camos should now be resolved which is definitely nice of course i had knew a lot of people having issues with tracking either the quantity of things that you ended up getting or just things not tracking in general so fingers crossed that is 100 fixed that doesn't say anything about dailies just yet for those armory unlocks which is unfortunate but just be on the lookout that that will probably be fixed out if not already and then finally balancing we saw increased hip fire control during sustained fire for the mcw bass b mtz interceptor renetti and the tier so a little bit of weapon balancing here but again as they mentioned it seems like not nearly everything that they wanted to get into this update so i'm curious what those circumstances were that led to not everything being able to be placed in this update and also follow-up question when we may end up being able to see that secondary update come out now at this point we do know that we will see it seems like those maps from modern warfare 2 carrying over before season one kicks in it was mentioned the initial selections scheduled to be four 6v6 maps that include farm 18 mercado and shoot house likely shipment coming along with that it says will become available shortly after launch in a dedicated playlist but did not say with season one so it kind of makes it sound like in this sort of limbo period this preseason that we're in right now so maybe we see that update along with other weapon tuning and, and other changes and stuff happen next week maybe the week before season one we'll just have to wait and see but anyways if you're curious there were still a key few items that were not fixed or adjusted the big ones that i noticed here with this were that double xp tokens on the ui in game should have had a fix for them getting stuck but they have not so that means if you go in game and you activate a double xp token it'll showcase that it does activate but it doesn't show up that timing that you have left on it and it won't also let you activate any out of game beyond that so it just bugs out you have to restart your entire application and then you can jump back into actually seeing the time and also activating more tokens and then finally the under barrel bug with the pull -em 762 that was not fixed as well where that will still give you the match rules data error that would kick you out of any game any matchmaking you were in or just put you back into the main menu when you're at your creator class menu not searching for a game or something so fingers crossed that, that and more will end up having more stuff and more fixes coming in the future but that is the update that we got today is it 6.5 gigabytes worth of data worthy i don't quite know again there's probably some stuff on the back end that was added in that hasn't quite been communicated maybe some prep stuff for season one we don't quite know but anyways that is the update here in a nutshell and everything that you need to know so that is we're going to wrap it up but before i do again make sure to check out my friends over at g fuel code espresso can get 30 percent off your entire order here to fuel your cod grind this season g fuels like my cup of coffee in the morning i'm drinking my team's flavor pog juice out of our tall boy shaker getting that sort of double dose of g fuel today so if you guys want to check that out any of the flavors i'd recommend are the morbius nectarine flavor hype sauce strawberry banana pink trip again pog juice love all those and more so if you guys want to check it out link in the description below and code espresso can you 30 percent off your entire order but for now that is what we're going to call it so let me know your thoughts down below like this update dislike it whatever the case drop your thoughts but if you enjoyed the video you found it at all insightful do me a favor and drop a like on it and if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single thing running all things modern warfare 3 as we gear up for still a lot upcoming more camo guides tips and tutorials all kinds of news coverage and of course war zones integration in the not so distant future we'll have you covered with all that kind of stuff so love to have you in the community but for now thanks so much for watching modism espresso i'll see you later take care and peace